Well, we're back here again, Josh. Summer LPL finals uh, between TES and JDG. We were just here uh, about three, four months back in the spring, casting the same two teams in the LPL final. Welcome back. Yeah, man. I mean, last time around, I didn't even know it's a rematch of the finals, but like, I'm looking forward to it from what I hear. Two crazy teams going at it uh, and ready with the first pick Lux. Not too surprised if that does go through. It's been really, really strong lately. Seen it across multiple different regions. Yeah, let, let, for a quick reminder for everyone, this is 10.16, so uh, it is still viable to do the, the Lux Sona bot lane uh, with the uh, double support items. So that is absolutely still in the meta, has not been uh, taken out just, just yet. And we're seeing these picks coming really fast. And you're seeing a quick jungle pick here, Nidalee in the jungle uh, for Karsa. And I've been lamenting the North American teams <laughs> that have been picking this champion because they look so bad on it. Uh, but this is a completely different story. And you're talking about one of the best junglers in the world in Karsa taking one of the most mechanically intensive uh, junglers in Italy. And then we're going to be able to get to see it performed here uh, at the best in the world. I, like, this, this is why we're watching this, Josh. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Something else I really like on the side of JDG. I hear LS talking about it all the time is a first pick Renekton. Not quite the red side pick, but I mean, I still like to see it. I think it is actually really, really good. And uh, I look forward to seeing what JDG can do on it. And also the Lilia coming through. I uh, I do like that pick. I don't know if it's been flexed anywhere else besides the jungle on top, though. Do you? Uh, to my knowledge, not. No, it's mostly in the jungle, though, when I, when I do see gotcha. it. But it's occasionally, we, we have, at least in the North American region, seen it in top a few times. But also doing fairly well. Like, it can get crushed in lane. Yeah, and then it, yeah, can, sure. it can still come back and be really useful later on in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, then, going back on that first pick about how the uh, the LPL, the Chinese regions, have unique first picks. Well, the last time around, it was picking Trundle first pick without any tanks being picked on the opposite side. The Chinese teams were picking it first because their coaches and analysts had figured that he really didn't have any bad matches. He was that strong uh, uh, those patches ago that you could just first pick him, whereas traditional wisdom is you pick him into a tank or two and you have your direct counter. But here, like you said, uh, they have another first pick. They're just taking Renekton. They want that strong uh, pushing top laner where they can win uh, the side lanes and really take over the game. And this is something that the LPL, the Chinese region, uh, is really known for. Uh, especially we've seen the Jace top and, and then other really, really hard counters uh, that you have to win uh, win lane, like you know Fiora and, and these types, sometimes with the Lucian. Mm -hmm. And I actually really do like that Lucian bank coming out from the side of top. It's been a really, really, really nice flex pick on uh, on multiple regions from what I've seen. And it's like, especially in top lane, it's been tearing up from what I've seen lately. Okay, I, really I need you to be honest with me. When you saw Broken Blade in that first game... Oh, oh first I, game. don't even remind me about the series, man. <laughs> I, I really liked the first pick. I did like it. I thought it was a really good idea from TSM. I thought TSM came out really strong. In, uh, in that series with that first game. I don't think Cloud9 expected what the... Uh what TSM had to offer there, but that was crazy. He looked really, really good on it. I was really worried. I was really, I'll be honest, I didn't think it was I, I worse. I was too, I was hoping, work, but, <laughs> but uh, happy to be proven wrong. Uh, love to see TSM advancing and then doing it in their own unique way with uh, Broken Blade on, on a carry. And, uh, Ooh, you know, the with the last pick. Ooh, oh, yeah. Do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> come on. I, I want to oh, see it. Oh, no. It just barely nope. didn't, didn't end up setting up. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you want to pick it there. The last last in the draft, you want to already see who your mid lane matchup is. Uh, and mm, sure. it's really, it looks like it's, yeah, it's going to be set in the mid lane. Yeah, I yeah. I feel like JDG should have known that. I actually don't think Kiana is that great into the set, in all honesty. I don't think that uh, that was the greatest mid pickup that you could have picked there. I feel like Kasten could have uh, actually been really good here. I was just thinking the same thing, Josh. Like, you, you don't think that uh, a set would really like stop you from farming and, and being able to scale, uh, mm -hmm. which is normally what you're, you're concerned about, picking, picking the Kasten. So, well, they had last pick, and we're gonna see uh, if JDG can really put it uh, to, to work and be able to see how this first, this first game is. This is a best of five. 
And we've uh, we've had a lot of history on this team, not just you and I, Josh, casting them, but these guys played in the midseason cup. They played in the spring finals. Uh, you you have here two arguably the best teams in the world in the same region. Yeah. And uh, we have Worlds coming up, and this, this is why I'm so excited to see these teams once again clash as the, the overwhelmingly uh, favored best teams in China. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I look forward to seeing both of these teams at Worlds, because both of them making finals does mean they both secure Worlds spot, correct? Yes. I believe so, yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, I think both these teams are going to go far in Worlds. They're expected to, and I mean... They're pretty crazy from what we've seen, right? And this is going to be a killer series, getting into game one here. I like both drafts from the teams. I think JD, JDG could have had slightly better mid-pick uh, um, for the last pick there, but they did opt with the Kiana, and uh, I'm looking forward to see what they go for here. I'm just going to recap the, the the viewers here with how these teams got to there. You're there, you see in the no fans in the stadium. We're just going to have to <laughs> we're going to have to get used to it. On, on one more point, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the announcement, but uh, China has said that they are not going to do a cross country tour like they were planning. They're going to keep all the games in Shanghai. Shanghai, uh, yeah. And what they're going to do instead is they're going to have the 2021 uh, Worlds back in China because they don't. You know they rightfully don't think they got a, they got a fair go. They're not going to have any fans there. Uh, this game is really big in China. Tencent is Chinese owned. Most of the fans in the world that are watching are Chinese, and so they're going to have the worlds once again. And then North America is going to get it right back after in 2022. So that's kind of how uh, the world setup is this year. Um, they're going to keep it all localized. They're going to try to do their own bubble. They're going to keep the team separated, and they're just going to make do with worlds. We're going to be happy with what we got. And here we got a late invade that's going to be spotted out. That's the advantage of this early ward. And that's also the advantage of this early red trinket. There you see already getting a zombie ward stack uh, coming through with this late invade. So both teams uh, showing that they're prepared. And Kanavi getting caught Really on the opposite side of them. Yeah, plus flash already really early. Ash going to start focusing that Tom Kench. Going to get slowed up. Does have to burn the flash. Jin keeps poking out this Ash a little bit. They do smite away the Raptors, so Lilia does hit the level 2, and another flash coming out of Jackie Love. That's a good one for the side of JDG, burning two flashes, and only the one on the side of JDG, as well as the heal and ignite. Doesn't this feel like a big deja vu between the TSM C9 series? And whoa, yeah, I'm out. Back in it right again. Another flash burn from Nidalee this time. Set picks up the kill on the Pantheon, goes down, followed up by the Lilia. Support Tom Kench going to go down too. This is a brawl level one. Ash picks up two <laughs> kills. So does the Nidalee. The what reload's coming here? in. It is the triple from Ash at the level one. Uh... Holy cow, next for TS, man. It was a good trade. Nidalee got two kills, but that's a 3 and 0 oh, Ash. How do you recover from that? Seven kills Woo. in two minutes and 30 seconds. Welcome to the LPL, folks. And this is why we wanted to cast these these teams going at it. But uh, reiterating, we were seeing a lot of this in the TSM C9 series where Spica on TSM would invade uh, the bot side jungle, the red camp, and then go yeah. ahead and start, start taking the raptor camp and even use the smite to be able to secure it and then immediately go back towards his side of the jungle, just making sure he got that one camp away and then got out. He got a first blood on it uh, the, the first time and the second time he just got a clean camp so we're seeing this strategy uh, evolve here in 1016 uh, that teams are finding that if you have enough information you can go ahead and force this bottom side jungle play and it's looking like it's working out for the team that's engaging on it the one that's going into yeah. the enemy team's jungle and dictating hey we're here and we're fighting for this camp and unless you have at least four to for your five members of your team there you don't feel that confident challenging for this one camp you don't even know if it's worth it yeah for sure and also a little bit of trades going on in the mid lane here though and see this is why i don't even think kiana is that great into this matchup like kiana just just loses a trade at, when she hits her level three's power spike but yeah going back to that level one uh a big reason i think jdg won that is because look how much aoe they have across their team right they have the lilia with the freaking darius q basically yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i forget what it's called and ash with the volley <laughs> ash with the volley her w and yeah. pantheon spear yeah when 
it's, it's so much compared to all the single target damage you have on the side of TES. That's a great point. And, you know, that adds up as you're as you're putting three or four people into these team fights. If you can hit more than one member with the skill, you're absolutely going to be exponential on your damage. So, yeah, we're already seeing, though, a dive, though, 430 here on the bot side. Kanavi uh, is playing the, the side of like TSM was being, being very aggressive onto these camps. And look at what this position here, four minutes and 40, 40 seconds behind the first tower. You just never see this in NA. Oh, never, man, never. <laughs> the super proactive gameplay coming out. I love what Kanavi's doing here. Uh, looking for the early bot lane plays. Get that Ash even farther ahead than she already is. And I mean, this this could go really well for them. Tom Kench is really low. Keanu's roaming down. is going to get there before the set. There's going to be another big brawl in the bot lane, I think. Both top laners with TP up. And everyone Carsley was starting to rotate really cool, towards yeah. bot side, but it looks like yeah. the teams have uh, decided to take a breather, realize that we're still in laning phase here, and they can save the tired eyes for a little bit later on. I mean, uh, we like aggression and all, but uh, we want to see how these lanes shake up a little bit too, and what we're seeing initially right off the bat is Renekton with a 10 CS advantage here in the top in the range Very matchup. Sure. Really, really strong for him. He's going to like that going back to base, picking up those Merc treads. Uh, and going to TP board. back to top. Exactly. He's going to really like that, that first guy. Yeah. Uh, though Kennen already had his back before getting the Seeker's arm guard in the call. So he's already all set. So Vernecton was just playing catch up there. But in this range matchup, they're hitting the level six. Uh, you really like to see uh, Zoom, who's a big part of this JDG team. He's really, like 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 you were saying, Josh, is like he was given this first pick Renekton, open to counter picks. <laughs> And uh, look, he's already winning the matchup despite facing the cannon who got to pick into him. Big part of yep. JDG's team for the for, for the spring and the summer. Just wanted to let the viewers know kind of how that JDG does play through top a little more than some of the teams that we're seeing in North America. Uh, yeah, for sure. A lot of the time in um, in NA, well, or teams generally opt to go for uh, scaling ball lanes too though so even in na we see like senna picks coming out and stuff so they can still play for play towards the top side if need be and i think that was another thing that they did really well in the tsm series is picking the scaling ball lane for doublelift and biofrost and playing towards broken blade i gotta say though those bot lanes in an entire game they saw about as much action as we've already seen um in the yeah. seven minutes in the yeah. lpl like when you're picking yeah. ezreal against senna and then you've got Nothing safe supports or Rakan or something well you're yeah. not we're gonna see a whole lot of action in lane unlike oh, here Knight, all we're back into the tower very close nothing's really gonna amount to this alt does come out but a maker gonna dodge out most of the damage from the kiana there that's a good look though I I think Knight wanted impression. to get him into the tower there, so he just slightly missed. It was really close, though. Yeah, for sure. Some trades going on in the jungle here, too, which Kanavi does lose out on a little bit. But uh, Karza did just come off of a reset, so did have a little bit of the extra AP in the kit there. And now maybe, maybe a ball lane play coming up. Could be another dive. Some trades going on in the mid lane. Haymaker comes out to take out the damage. Kiana chunk set really low. And after you get that serrated dirt, maybe the lane changes a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're seeing it played out in front of our eyes, but there's still a lot of game left. And just because Kiana's got the early push onto set does not necessarily mean he's going to win the lane just, just yet. Yeah. But big turn All here, here for we go. More plays. Pantheon going to go down really, really early. Does, unfortunately, uh, get picked up by the Tom Kench. So uh, that was a good play, though. I like the, I like the gank from Karza. That was a really good look. Um, I think... Lilia should have been there to counter, though. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, 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 juxtapose, juxt, juxtapose. Come on, how do you say that? <laughs> Juxta, come on, how do I say that? You know the word I want, right? Juxtapose. Is that what you're trying to yeah, say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Compare, there, you go. there you go. You know that. Uh, and look at the Nidalee uh, here and Carsa. Already two kills and two assists here at eight minutes uh, in a four-kill game. So he's got 100% kill participation, been involved in everywhere around the map. Uh, including the support Rome top lane already. It's so early. Wow. He's doing it. <laughs> oh, if he takes this blast cone, oh my god. He's this could be terrible. Seeing that. Oh, this is the steer. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> that could have went. That, uh, that could have went worse for Lamau there. Like that, if uh, if Carset saw him a little bit earlier, he would have really liked to get in a fight with the double buffs and the level up. 
Yeah, absolutely. But you're right. You don't you don't see this either. Um, we're really contrasting how the differences between uh, the NA games that we're watching uh, versus uh, versus these LPL yeah. games. Yeah, but I mean, it is hard not to do, right? Just like <laughs> it's such a big difference going from NA to LPL like this. This is insane. <laughs> wow, Karsa could be in a really weird spot here. Actually, no. It's gonna go for uh, the planner Necton. Get out. But the ulti from Lilia does come up. This has to be Karsa going down. There should be so much CC here. And Kanavi does pick up the kill. Knight arrives to the top lane, but it still is a 4v2. So not too much is going to amount for this. Should just be JDG picking up the Rift Herald. And Jin all alone in the bot lane. You got so much roaming. Both supports gone from their lane. He's just going to push his old lane up. Going to get a tower plate. Going to continue on. No one wants to be around him. He's like a person that <laughs> smells, you know? Like, they haven't put on deodorant in a couple days. It's a hot summer day, and he's just stinking it up down there. No one wants to be around him. Well, he gets solo farm. He gets a tower plate. We're going to see if being alone is going to be worth it. Uh, Pantheon helping out the Kiana here to get that lane shoving in. She does want to go on the reset here. But are looking for a play onto the Tom Kench. Kiana cancels the recall. Set. Showmaker picks up the Pantheon right into the rest of the team and is going to go down. That's a perfect timing considering this dragon is up and it should be tops for the taking. We got to see that jump stun versus the uh, the suplex and uh, the suplex wings out. And some more trades going on in the mid lane here. But Kiana is not winning out on these. I think after uh, picking up the ninja tabbies and the bomby cinder it makes it uh, a hell of a lot harder for Kiana. And the dragon does end up going towards top esports there with no contest from JDG. Was looking to try and pick up that blue, but isn't going to. Kanavi with the chase Ooh, does the get arrow. to slow on to Tom Catch, and the arrow comes in, followed by the Pantheon alt. Going to get killed. It's going to be picked up by Kanavi. Kanavi, he's looking pretty good on this Lilia. 2 1 and 4 right now. Was a little bit slower to get started despite having an early kill, but uh, he's definitely showing his presence now. A big and in the here. top lane, yep. Ult, the trade's kind of going to be forced to use with the ulti. Nothing too much going to amount from this. So one thing I'm looking at is uh, is Lamal here on Pantheon. He's got three deaths, but he's got four assists. So it's not like he's uh, he's dying for no reason. There, it's often coming at the the benefit of his team. So we're gonna have to see is he gonna be able to maintain levels and still be useful uh, despite dying so frequently. When you start dying that that much early on, you can fall behind in levels and just get one shot later on in the game. Uh, so we're not mm. at that point yet, but it's just something to keep an eye on. Yeah, for sure. I do think a really big thing that Top has to worry about here, though, is the fact that there's this 3-0 Ash in the bot lane. There's this really big lead on Jin, And right now, they're not doing anything about it. And so if she gets free scaling into the late game, it's going to be really concerning. But now Lilia coming out bot with the ult on the Jin TP coming in from the Renekton, or Kiana, sorry. Going to be matched by a Tom Kench ulti. Going to eat him up, throw him away. Does get out barely though. Kiana ult does miss onto him. Kanavi's gonna chase onto him, pick up the kill onto Jin. Kanavi's gonna have to try and get out here though. Set Thanks. pulls her back, but the fight's still going. Showmaker comes out. This could be Kanavi getting killed, but massive healing from the smite coming in. Or was that the smite? What what was the healing there from? <laughs> was it Raptor Camp up? <laughs> I know uh, I know Knight had the had the shield uh, there uh, and was able to tank some of the damage and then flash right back over. Good play by him. Uh, but here you get to see the movement of Lilia. That you had Jin, who uh, had the movement speed to move out, got Tom Kench W'd, and then even flashed out and yeah. still got caught. Uh, and that's yeah. why people are picking up Lilia. Uh, that despite yeah being down a little bit early on to uh, Nidalee, is uh, catching right back up and there hitting the the the, the sleep. That's already a couple times that Kanavi's hit that sleep bubble, and here. Being able to get right out despite the movement speed and there, the quick little step as well. Look how far Lilia is. Oh she's still my catching god. Her. That movement speed is unreal. And the Raptor cap will, camp was up, so that's probably what he got his healing from. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely did smite it. <laughs> but really close <laughs> game still. Yes, we're having JDG take a little bit of, uh, of a lead here in the gold and the kills but a uh, tes top esport does have that first dragon so these teams played really really close every time they've played it's always so so close in spring they went to game into the fifth game and in the, the midsummer cup they were 
they were just edging out each other and now once again another close game we might be down for five games i don't even know like let's let, let's 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 take a peek okay actually we do know but we're not gonna tell you <laughs> This, these games <laughs> were played a couple days ago. You know, we do with the time change and all, coordinating the schedules. We want to be able to cast these for you. And uh, we do know the result, but uh, let's just say it's going to be a nail butter. And uh, you're going to be in for a treat to see who wins. Yeah, for sure. And I'm still liking JDG's chances here. Uh, do they have the rifts? Where did they end up using that rift? Did they use it mid lane or bot lane after that play? They did pick uh, they, up a tower with first the first turret bot. I believe or Bosch should say yeah not yeah okay that's uh and that's, that's where the goal thought. lead uh, really came from yeah like being able that's, to that's that where there. you want to yeah that's where you want to put it for sure Ash getting even bigger and they're really picking on Jin this game you know we saw that big play onto Jin there they forced really hard onto him and uh he's hurting right now he's pretty far behind very far behind <laughs> and you can see in the gold here right he's third least amount of gold in the game Ash second most in the game that's uh that's pretty scary and in general, JDG, with Kanavi, Loken, and Yagao all in the lead in gold over their respective uh, laners or junglers. Yeah, and uh, Jackie Love uh, was a big reason why this top esport teams went from being a kind of middle-of-the-pack team to being one of the best in the world. Like, ever since he uh, got traded and moved on to that team... Uh, and so despite him uh, not doing well this game, he has been very impactful for this team. And we're going to see, can he come back? How is this game going to end? And I just want to say for the viewers about how these teams got there. Top Esports faced Sunning uh, Esports there in the semifinals. And they 3-0'd them. So Top Esports just went off of a 3-0 win over the semifinals. Whereas JDG, they faced... LGD and won 3 1. So both of the teams are riding high. Uh, and of course, in the third place match, match Sunning did 3 0 LDG. So if you could say just by using LOL math, TES beat the stronger opponent more convincingly. So if that means anything to you, uh, then TES should win this series. Uh, but we'll have to find out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now looking on for play on the Rift Herald here, they are going to pick it up uncontested, and they're sitting on a warded bush right now, and they sit tent there from JDG, <laughs> looking for the uh, for the aftermath of that Rift Herald, hoping people walk through that mid bush. But in the top side now could be a dive going on, uh, unlikely seeing as Karsa is top side. I feel like they should know that. Kiana's making her way up here too though, and keep in mind Pantheon does have alt, so this could be a four man play. But no, Kennen is just going to walk away. She reads it out. They, they're sniffing it out. They know what's happening. And uh, it is going to be another tower picked up on the top side for JDG here. Well, 369 uh, went ahead and, and ran away for today. But we'll be back tomorrow, uh, maybe with a tower this time and not against three opponents. But they had good vision there, was uh, top eSport there on the top side. They had the scuttle. They had a vision in that top river ward. So he knew right away as soon as he was getting collapsed on. And this is something in high elo play that is really important is when to give up your turret. You are going to get three and four man turret dough. It's when you can just give it up, go back to base, pick up your half item or, you know, pick up, you know, whatever th that, that ward that you need and then get back into lane uh, when there's not going to be three opponents there and then get back to pushing that out or freezing that top wave and there you got to see 369 do exactly that and has the spell book so has ghost and flash up for now and he's just going to be pushing this top wave in and we're going to see if he's going to decide to roam as you're seeing jdg ping out a ward deep in the three six uh, the uh the, the top esport jungle here on the top side so they keep pinging out this top ward in the river but that would be a, a pretty wild play to teleport over uh, that far away from all your other team members. Yeah, for sure. You see um, the one I'm talking at about, a... right? Right, the one that right in the middle of the lane. Yeah, yeah. They've been hanging that out for thirty. <laughs> I do, seconds. I do. <laughs> they're looking at it, you know. Maybe they decide not to do it, but they're like, "Hey, <laughs> we got this big play here," and then they talk each other out, and they're like, "Yeah, okay, let's game one. Let's uh, let's go for a little more sure play this time around." For sure. Now, what I want to ask you, Rev, is what does top esports do from the position they're in? Because you have these big leads from the mid jungle and bot on JDG. 
Obviously, the Pantheon isn't going to scale that well into the late game, but you still have this really crazy team fight, and they're going to be a con and they're going to be taking these dragons. So, do you think in the coming dragon fight around this uh, ocean, do you think Top should be contesting it or no? I think Top needs to be playing the siege and poke style at this point. When you're looking at uh, a Kennen, uh, a Nidalee, and a Jin. I think you have better range to be able to uh, get the opponent down a little bit before you go ahead and engage on that team fight. So I think it, the impetus is more on JDG to be engaging on these team fights, and it's more on TES to control the distance and to be able to uh, retreat if necessary. You have the Tom Kench, which is a great tool to catch out anyone that's out, and that's kind of how I see uh, top esport. Uh, go, uh, going into these next team fights. Now, of course, you could see a big cannon flank, uh, and you could get you know fortunate on that way. But I don't think you put all the eggs into the cannon flank basket. I think you use the the, the more sure tools that you have and, and use that range. What do you have to say to yourself? Do you do you see something similar? Or do you see like another uh, uh, angle on on how either uh, JDG or Top can can fight these fights? Uh, you know what? No, I do. I do think I agree. Knowing. It's LPL. I do think it might end up in being some sort of dragon fight, but what I want to see from them is I want to see them waiting until they get the two or three items on the Jin, until they get the cannon a little bit stronger, get maybe a little bit more armor on that set so he doesn't get defected too much in these team fights, and I want them. To, I want to see them contesting the third, maybe fourth dragon, rather than uh, rather than this one coming up right now. And uh, Rift Herald also going to be placed here in the mid lane. Should take down this tower. Oh, not quite. Going to get a pretty close. Just need a couple more autos. And, uh, yeah, it does look like they're going to go for the contest here. Um, Kennen just picked up her Morello. So I suppose they do have a little bit of a stronger team fight. Jin on two items. Now, they did just hit their item spikes. Tom Kench also got uh, the QSS. So uh, they might not be in a terrible spot to contest this. They still are behind, though, and they got to be careful. And uh, this dragon's just going down right away. They are on the top side of the map, though, so maybe they're going to look to fake out JDG or something, try and get them to face check a bush or something. Well, good eyes on that. Absolutely. Uh, top did just have two or three very, very key uh, item completions just right now. So even though they weren't able to contest that dragon because they were back at base buying, they are in a position to be able to fight. And here we're seeing... Right coming out here. We're acting with a TP behind after Kanavi slept the set. Does get very low, but nothing's going to amount out it. And on the other side, closer to the mid lane tower, both the bot lane members are going down. So is Jackie Love. That was a great play from Top Esports, splitting up the team and getting both the bot lane members. That are uh, that's uh, some big shutdowns coming out. That's going to go a long ways for them. Yeah, not only picking up the sh shutdown for the AD carry Ash, but picking up that mid turret as well uh, is going yeah. to uh, cement their 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 gold lead at, at this two thousand plus mark. Uh, as well oh, as the true, dragon, yeah. so early advantage for JDG. But I, I also have to go back to where you say, well, let's first take this re re replay before we go uh, about how these teams are strong. And uh, a missed enchanted crystal arrow there from Ash was uh, the beginning of the end. And once that CC was missed, it was pretty easy for Carsa to just uh, mm -hmm. flash right over and, and pick up the kill. He's already got a, a fair bit of AP with the runic echoes and the hourglass already completed more than enough to be able to take out that support at. At level 10 yeah absolutely and that was also a really great look from the cannon to get behind ash on under tower there that was a that was a really good look that was pretty creative play i have to say myself but cannon pretty over centered on the top side here gonna get engaged on no flash only the exhaust doesn't have ultimate either should just be a quick pickup supreme display of talent comes out and it's gonna get picked up by the kiana the soliloquy of flash you know sometimes you want to be able to change it out for something else like an exhaust but uh you know when you need it you really need it uh, yeah, and uh <laughs> they are just going right onto the baron with that top pick they know it kennen is not up here she does have tp when she's up in 25 but this baron's probably going to go down before then knight looking for something maybe but no not anymore ash arrow comes out tom kench going to get cc'd up but qss is out showmaker coming out from the set going to just jump right into the whole enemy team Jin untouched in the back line with the ulti and it's just going to be a two for oh. That was big. That's there pretty from crazy. Knight. The uh, the yeah, and you now also right. getting jump on. Yeah. Oh, okay. He is going to live though. Oh, unless they TP in. Tom Kench. No one went in the mouth with him. Jin maybe on Kanavi here. Kanavi might go down. You gals in a bad spot too. Renekton's going to be focused down first, but the healing comes out. Finally, is going to get picked up. 
Nidalee's on you, Gao. Should go down here. There we go. Top. What a freaking fight. Right back in this. And this all started from JDG starting Baron after a single pick. Very aggressive. And they ended up paying for it. Even though Loken was able to hit the Enchanted Crystal Arrow onto his target, it wasn't enough because you had Knight turn the, the game back around and showmaker it into at least three of them. After that, the fight was pretty much over. That AoE uh, and that damage was more than enough to hear. Going and they all coming out. Kennen's going to ult onto Kanabi, so there's no chance for the steal. Didn't have smite anyway. Baron's going to get picked up from Nidalee. Ash Arrow comes out. Going to be able to pick up the top laner, 369. Loken with a good look there. Volley on the set. Going to look to chase. Got to be careful to dodge out those arrows. And a TP coming from behind, too. Yagao's going to look. Has the ultimate up. A whiss hit. No! <laughs> That could have been the play for JDG there. They needed to pick up kills there. They shouldn't have let them go uh, scot-free with that Baron. They Just a misplay. Yeah. They picked up that single kill, but you're right. They could have got a little bit more. I thought that old hit there at the end. I, I, that's strange to see. I'd like to see that again. I wonder. Yeah, if I mean, it, it did hit, but the issue is you don't get uh, you don't get the stun unless they hit the alt into the wall, right? Uh, and she just yeah, missed yeah. it. The alt that's wasn't true. into the wall. Yep. But here's the replay coming out. I do like to jump onto the. Oh, this is the original replay, actually. This was the original fight. Before, Set with the great yeah. showmaker onto the back line. Yigao is trying to zone the back line, but isn't really doing much. Shut's just untouched. They don't need their back line there because of the Jin ult. <laughs> the top turn in this game. Now we've got even gold, and they've got a, a Baron on their side. So they went from gold and dragon disadvantage to now a Baron and gold advantage. So... Being and a fed Jin all of a sudden picks up wow. three kills, eight assists. Look at that! And yeah, he's <laughs> he's big man. <laughs> How these games can turn over in the Chinese region. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's pretty crazy to see the Nidalee too, because like you, you always think of Nidalee as this early game champ, but Nidalee has done so much throughout this entire game. Oh, but Ash Arrow coming out, a really great devourer from Tom Kench there to save the gym. Yeah, quick reactions on that one. And uh, yeah, we keep harping on it, but uh, 12 kill participation out of 13, you're not you're yeah. not seeing that. Even Spica, who's looked decent on the Nidalee, is, on definitely, the Nidalee, yeah. is definitely not doing uh, this type of game like we're seeing from Karsa. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Uh, they are going to be looking for the spot tower, but it's going to have to walk away. They're walking up through the mid lane, maybe looking for a play here. Dragon is up now, so this is going to be a big contest. Oh, Kiana's on the flank. This could be a really good angle. Nothing happening yet. Kiana with the supreme display of talent doesn't get much. Watch out for Renekton. Renekton's into the entire team, but a massive cannon ult on the back line. Whoa. Kills Ash and Kiana. And he's still Set up. Showmaker. He's still up in the Still going to go up. Oh. Oh my god, what is going on? Kanavi still hasn't gone down either. Let's oh four, no! Three, one. It's just Kanavi <laughs> left. And Tahop <laughs> keeps taking out all their opponents. And not only going to decide to chase, but they're going to push as well. Pushing mid, pushing bot. And 369 was all kinds of everywhere on that fight. Even with Renekton Kanavi, being able to get the flank from the back end. Uh, and then Karsa making it elementary. And I won't call you Watson, but... We have ourselves a series and top esport getting the early team fight advantages. So we're going to see how this series develops. So far, JDG looking better in laning phase and top better in the team fight phase. How does this develop? Oh, well, right now, they just did pick up the inhib. They are going to go for the dragon after getting the resets off right now. Uh, but Nidalee's still in the river or in the jungle. She might get picked up here. Gets out here. Oh, Nidalee, you are caught right now. What are you doing? Woo. Karza almost really trolls his team there, but it's going to be fine, and this should be the pickup on Dragon. This is what I want to see from top here. Keep extending this lead. There's no real reason you should lose this game at this point. All your laners are scaled up, big, ready to go for these team fights, and you should just be able to force on them. This was a really good attempt from the side of JDG, though. It, it was good to see them engage, but a really nice set ulti there. Uh, really just did... Oh, sorry, Kennen ulti at first. Yeah. That really put... Uh, Put them in the ground that started that team fight and ended it pretty quick. Yep. So 369 doesn't have a kill yet, but is playing this game really, really well. Doesn't have to win that top lane matchup uh, so hard. Just has to be able to show up when you're needed into the team fights. And there you're seeing it uh, that 
slicing maelstrom more than enough to be able to take out the team but one thing i wanted to point out from from top esport is how they were able to play front to back despite getting collapsed on by three different angles and they kept yeah. their carries and moved them north to where the pantheon was so they moved their three carries towards the support of jdg and then they had their tank uh tom kench and the tank uh, set facing the real the carries of jdg but before i'm done explaining the last team fight another one's going on josh we're seeing lpl again i love it Six thousand gold up tops in the in the jungle they want a piece in fact i think they want the whole thing and they're going to get it if jdg decides to defend this tower uh, i'll find it very very unlikely that they decide to hold this base turret but if they do top is ready to fight and there they're showing for top cannon here on the bot side he does have teleport he's going to start moving that bot and we have ourselves a networking error let us find where we are in this game <laughs> 